Good morning. We are extremely pleased that you are here. It is good to come together for the purpose of co-creating. Do you agree? You are understanding that it is co-creating at its best. You bring the physical you, which is hmm, leading edge focus. And also, you bring the non-physical you, while you do not really know that you do. You think that you are physical beings because you see the flesh, blood, and bone of you. And you are magnificently that. But you are source energy expressing yourself here in physical form. And it is our desire to bring you around to remembering that in a keener way than ever before. And for many humans, you don't recognize that much at all. You are so good at being physical. You are so good at translating this vibrational place through your physical translators. You translate vibration and so you see and you translate vibration and so you hear and you translate vibration and so you smell and taste and touch and you are so very good at this physical translation of vibration that you easily forget that you are extensions of source energy. But when you remember that you are extensions of source energy, then your life becomes broader and fuller because you have all of these resources of wisdom and worthiness and knowledge to fall back on. When you forget that you are so much more than what you are since you've been born in this body, often you do not recognize yourself in the wholeness and in the fullness and your life is not as much as it might be. And it is our desire that you come into a fuller recognition of all that you are. We also want you to understand that, or remember, it's a better way of saying it, that you are source energy in a physical body, not because you are here to catch up with something else, but because you are the leading edge of that which is source. As you move through this time-space reality in your exposure to all of this, what we see as delightful contrast, and you sometimes don't see it as quite so delightful. As you move through this contrast, you cannot help from your selfish perspective, and we mean that in the best of ways because you can only see through the eyes of self. As you look through these selfish eyes, and you perceive this environment in which you are living, you cannot help but conclude new preferences. It just happens. It happens even if you are a one-celled organism. It happens even if you are a cell in one of your human bodies. Every point of consciousness, which is everything, is having some exposure to some contrasting experience and is selfishly and perfectly concluding a new preference. And that new preference is born because every point of consciousness is selfish. And when that new preference is born, and this is the part that you forget that we remember that we want you to remember because when you do, your life will be so much better. When that new preference is born, source, which is the greater part of you, the non-physical part of you, immediately becomes one with that new preference. And the evolution of all species is because of that. And when you think about that in a broader context, you have to understand how wonderful that is because if every point of consciousness is evaluating contrast and every point of consciousness is coming to its own personal conclusions of what would be even better than what is, and if source then, with all of its resources, we like that, resources of source, with all of its resources are then becoming one with that new preference or desire. Can you see how this ever-expanding universe is working perfectly? If you've been listening to us for a while, you've heard us say that when you ask, it is given every time, no exceptions. And we know that many of you don't quite believe that. We hear you say, if that's true, then where's my stuff? <laughs> because I know I've been asking and I am not seeing it showing up, and so it must not really be true. But we're wanting you to understand that when you or anyone, any point of consciousness, has an exposure to an experience that causes you to ask for something, that source immediately becomes one with that, that on a vibrational level, it has already occurred. 
We want to say to you, and we can't really find ways that make you understand it easily, although as you look around you, there is not a shred of evidence to the contrast, to the contrary of this. But we want you to understand that when a new desire is born, source becomes one with that desire, and that everything is first thought. And when it is thought upon longer, it becomes thought form, and eventually it becomes what you call manifested. So as we visit with you here, we know that you are in this fully manifested lifestyle. You see yourselves in your physical form. And most of what most of you want to talk about when we first come together is, how can I make my life better? How can I get the things I want and release the things I don't want? How can I improve my body? How can I get more money? How can I get the things I want? How can I get rid of the things I don't want? And we want you to understand that All things must happen vibrationally before they can happen physically. And a big part of what you want is already taken care of on a vibrational level because when you ask, it is always given. But that gap between you giving birth to the desire and you receiving it so that you know you've really got it, that gap is what this workshop and all of our workshops is about. It's about why we are here. It's about how you close the vibrational gap between what you really have just become and what you are letting yourself be. Your life experience is causing you to become more constantly. But sometimes you don't let yourself become what that non-physical part of you has already become. Is that making some sense? In other words, 99.9999% of every creation is complete before they're complete vibrationally before you see the physical evidence of it. And so often you are a long way toward the manifestation of something is just about to pop into your experience, but because you are counting on physical evidence before you really believe that it's happening, you sabotage your own vibration. You add contradictory energy. In other words, when you want more money on that vibrational level, it has become. But when you are beating the drum of, I don't have enough money, when you're saying, my parents didn't have enough money either, and our neighbors have far more than they need, as you beat that drum of the injustice of your lack of money, you hold yourself in a different vibrational pattern than the pattern of having plenty of money. And so you're not letting the money that you deserve, the money that you've asked for, the money that is being held for you in vibrational escrow, so to speak, it's yours. It's encoded with everything that you are. It is meant to be yours, but you've got to be a vibrational match to it or it will not manifest in your experience. In the same way that you cannot set your radio dial on 6.30 a.m. and hear what's being broadcast on 98.7 FM, you cannot ask for money and then complain that you don't have it and be in a place where you close that vibrational gap. And so the art of allowing is about closing that vibrational gap. It's about understanding, as we began here this morning, as we said to you, you are far more than this physical being that you know. But this physical being that you know that's thinking and believing and remembering and musing and pondering and observing, this thinking being that you are, as you are focusing and therefore offering a vibration, law of attraction is responding to your vibration. Law of attraction is the law, the massive manager in the sky, if you will, not really, but it's a nice picture, isn't it, that organizes all of these vibrational frequencies. And so when you're offering a vibration that says, I am abundant and good things come to me, then you are not blocking the abundance and good things that you want to come. But when you say, good things don't come to me because I was not born under the right star or because some curse was assigned to me at an early age... Well, you don't really say that so much. But as you complain about what's not happening, you hold what you want away from you. And so the art of allowing is about learning to find vibrational alignment with who you have already on some level vibrationally become. And when you close that gap, you are sending a signal that is loud and strong and clear and undeniable. And when you get there, haven't you known people that just know that things are going to work out for them and don't you notice they do? Don't you see people that just seem to 
emanate an aura of prosperity and doesn't money just seem to make its way to them? And haven't you at some time or other felt the injustice of that as you say, oh man, there are so many people working so hard and the money doesn't seem to be coming to them and there are so many people that don't seem to be working hard at all and the money comes easily and we say, it's not about the action you're offering, it's about your vibration alignment or not. If you're sending out one signal or a mixed signal, it's not a clear signal and it's going to be slower in coming. So the art of allowing is about closing that gap on any number of issues and getting yourself into the place that you're offering a clear signal so that you can be the full receiver of the things that you want, of the lifestyle that you want, of the feeling within your belly that you want, of the well-being that you want, of the all of the worthiness that is already there for you, but that you are keeping yourself from sometimes. Jerry and Esther have navigational systems in their vehicles, three different kinds now, Magellan in one, OnStar in another, Pioneer in another, but they all work on the same premise. The system, because of the satellites in the sky and the dishes on the roof, the antennas and the contraptions in the vehicle, the system knows where they are at all times. And so they program in their desired destination and then Magellan calculates the route between where they are and where they want to go and gives them verbal and visual description. And as Jerry and Esther follow the prescribed route, Magellan just sings along. It's a woman's voice. The man's voice was far too bossy. <laughs> and Magellan will say to them, if they deviate from the route, please proceed to the highlighted route. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Please proceed to the highlighted route. If Jerry and Esther are stubborn and do not, in time Magellan will say, when possible, make a legal U-turn or recalculating route. But Magellan is only interested in these two points of vibrational relativity, where they are in relationship to where they want to go. Magellan never says to them, where have you been? Where were you yesterday? Please explain to me, where have you been since you graduated from college? Or... No, I'm not going to tell you. You asked me yesterday. You didn't listen. I'm not going to tell you today. That's your mother that does that. Magellan, Magellan only has two things that are important. That is, where am I in relationship to where I want to be? And you have the same sort of guidance system within you that is always giving you moment by moment feedback on where you are vibrationally in relationship with that which you have already become. If you are moving in the direction of that which you have been asking for, then your guidance system is purring along also. But when you deviate from your highlighted route, from the path of least resistance, you feel vibrational discord in the form of negative emotion. So the emotion that you feel is literally giving you feedback about the vibrational relationship between what life has caused you to prefer and what you're actually doing in your right now focus. It doesn't matter if you're focused past, present, or future. It doesn't re matter if you're remembering or if you're observing or if you're imagining. In any case, you are offering a vibration.